As promised, today I'm going to recap the ECU from one of my M104 980 vehicles. I've got two of them. This ECU I have recapped before, but it does have eBay uh, alleged Nichicon capacitors, uh, which have proven to be a bit of a gamble if it comes to authenticity and the quality of them because it is well known in the industry that rejects straight out of the factory are sold um, on eBay to unsuspecting victims or fakes and I don't want any of that rubbish in my vehicle so I'm going to be using from a reputable supplier proper automotive grade TDK Epcos brand capacitors rated for 220 microfarads at uh, 50 volts at the temperature of 125 degrees Celsius um, and they're rated for 3,000 hours at that temperature which is very impressive and I got those from element 14 I will provide a link in the description for the exact capacitors I'm using um, and out of interest, I will test the uh, alleged Nichicons that are in there. They might be okay, but anyway, they're going in the bin. And if you're curious, you just need a 10 millimeter ratchet to get this out of the car. There's uh, two bolts there. And to open it up, it will be a number two Phillips. Um, so let's go ahead and get it open. So this is what the KJET 104 ECU looks like inside. As you can see, it's a lot more modern than the earlier version ECUs. Uh, presumably the M119 KJET might look the same as well. You can see that it does uh, start to have SMD devices on it. It's in that era. Uh, it does still have two electrolytic capacitors, uh, which will eventually dry out and fail, especially the one that's right next to the heat sink there. Um, I have changed those. They're not original, but I'm going to change them again anyway. Um, I have dumped the contents of this EEPROM in the past and soldered it back to the board. I was just curious. Um, and I have tried different market version uh, ROMs in this just to see what would happen. The um, thing with these is it has to be exactly the same hardware revision ECU. Otherwise, you're going to get weird things happening. So I did not find one that actually worked. Unless it's some security as well, there could be. I don't know. Uh, the MCU is still Intel-based, uh, but it's Siemens-branded, even though this is a Bosch ECU, which is quite interesting. Uh, I presume that's still uh, Intel 8032-based, but probably... Uh, a more enhanced version of it because it seems to have a lot more pins than the regular 8032. But that could just be the package as well. Uh, it is definitely an 8-bit microcontroller anyway. Um, yeah. So to get to those capacitors, we actually need to remove this board. Uh, so hold on, and I will remember how to do that. I believe it's just a case of taking this one screw and then these Torx head screws, but we shall see if I have forgotten anything. And yes, I have forgotten something. There are four more number two Phillips screws around the connector that need to come out as well. Uh, so those T10 Torx screws have come out pretty easily, just make sure you've actually got a T10 Torx screwdriver or a piece to do that. So I'll get these four Phillips out now and this board should be ready to come out. And you've got to love the attention to detail. Each of those four screws actually has a rubber seal just to prevent water ingress into the ECU. Very impressive. And they appear to be wax coated as well, just to be absolutely sure. So now this board should be able to just come out of here on an angle. Unfortunately, I can't leave the camera running while I do it. 
and do not have a tripod today. Maybe I can because it's really quite easy. Uh, gently lifting the board on an angle and it will just come out. So now we've got access to service it. And there's even a rubber gasket around the connector. I guess that's to be expected. Damn, these things are made well. No wonder they were so expensive when they were new. And uh, these four terminals here are where those two capacitors are. Hopefully my soldering skills have improved somewhat since I did this because that looks atrocious. I mean, the connections are fine, but I didn't even bother cleaning up the uh, flux residue, so uh, I think we'll do a better job than that today. One more thing, always take note of the polarity of these capacitors, or any capacitors that are polarised. You will note on these Bosch ECUs, they kindly put the positive symbol on the positive side of the capacitor. The white line side with the negative stripes going through it, well, that's the negative side. In this case, negative goes right on both of them when the connector is at the top. So this is going to be damn easy um, as far as that's concerned anyway. Uh, we can't possibly screw that up. So let's go ahead and get these out. I forgot to mention you should... Uh, ground yourself before touching sensitive electronics because you may fry this thing just from electrostatic discharge. Now I've got these two caps removed. Uh, this is also where I'm going to warn you if you are not good at soldering you shouldn't even consider this. This board is a lot more dense than the previous version ECUs. Uh, it may even be multi-layer. I'm not sure about that. Um, but it would be feasible for an inexperienced person to actually destroy one of these in this process. Um, these are rather small solder joints. The pads are rather small, and I could see this thing getting destroyed by someone who has a $5 massive soldering iron and a limited skill set. I do have a vacuum desoldering station, um, so it was pretty easy for me to get this out without um, destroying anything nearby. Um, I just desoldered those joints and lifted them straight out and there is no damage. Any damage to those pads is uh, from the last time I actually did this job. Um, I probably didn't have the uh, vacuum desoldering station back then. I've only just got into electronics rather recently. And you can see that's where they mount there. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put them in now and solder them in place. Now those uh, Nichicon caps actually tested perfectly fine still, so this is technically a waste of time. But I feel a lot better having proper automotive grade caps installed now. So I know they're probably going to last longer than I do, and I should never have to open this thing again. So that concludes uh, today's exercise. I will also do my other ECU as well. This is from my blue-black car. I'll do my red uh, 124 as well. Um, that will be the more interesting one because that ECU um, has done a lot more work. That car had more than 300,000 kilometres on it when I got it and it was left baking out in the sun for years before I restored it. So it'd be interesting to see what they're like. Um, I won't bother making a video about it because it's not that interesting, but I might add it in the comments below if I find anything exciting to report. I kind of doubt it because I still even have the original caps for this ECU and they still test pretty good. Um, they're not as good as brand new, but yeah, there is some aging going on there. Uh, I don't remember exactly what the figures were, but they're not as good as these. Anyway, I'll put this back together now 
and reinstall it in the car. And that's what the rear side looks like. It probably would look better if I used uh, some additional flux, but hey, I can never find it. I've lost it. I don't know where I've put it, and uh, it's hard to buy it. It's a rip-off to buy it in store, and when you get it online, they think it's some kind of suspicious substance, and it always seems to get confiscated. Uh, anyway, that's it for now. I'll put this back together. So that's all of the screws now reinstalled. One thing to pay attention to on these rubber gaskets, uh, make sure there's no junk on them when you're going to clamp things down. There were a few wax crystals around the socket side gasket. I just wiped those off. You want to have a 100% perfect seal when you're closing this thing because if moisture gets in here, it's game over. So just be very careful. So that's it, it's back together. Um, one other final warning, make sure you do hook the can under these tabs at the top. Otherwise it's just going to be a water trap. And one other optional thing I like to do is just to make a note somewhere where it's going to be seen, but not all the time. Uh, with a date when it was recapped. So I know I'm not gonna forget this anyway, but hey, one day I might end up with dementia and not know what I've done. At least I know this has now been recapped on the 20th of August, 2022. And yes, that's the date format we use in Australia. I know you Americans uh, switch the date uh, in, a, in a way that has the uh, day and month uh, different to ours but that's how we do it here. So that's it. I'm going to install this in the car and just make sure that the uh, idle valve makes its funny noise just to see that this thing is working. I'm not going to start it up because I don't believe in starting the car up just for the purpose of starting it. I will take it for a drive later, but I'm sure it will be fine.